Grazie. Let's, let's uh, cross to Italy. Professor Marcello De Noli, he's from Bergamo, Professor Emeritus of Public Health and Epidemiology, and the Sweden editor of the Indita magazine, uh, formerly a lecturer at Harvard Medical School and founder of the NGO Swedish Doctors for Human Rights. Professor, welcome to the show. Thank you for the invitation to participate in your show. Recently, one of the most important figures in the European Parliament conceded that the sanctions on Russia had not had the effect that they were intended to have. Is he right about that? Well, yes, uh, I think he is. And uh, there are several reasons for that, in my opinion. You know, historically, economic sanctions, embargoes and the like imposed to other countries, seldom they reach uh, their purpose. The primary objective of economic or financial sanction is in fact not economic, but instead obeys a political strategy. And this consists in trying to obtain a regime change or a political system change by fomenting dissatisfaction among the target population. Well, that was the primary intention behind the financial sanctions. What was the secondary intention? And a second reason is that even if the discourse of the United States and that of the European Union is of a hegemonic nature, there exists de facto a multipolar order in this world. This has made possible for Russia to find new partners, export and import wise, and consolidate new political alliances. There is a G7 and there is a G20, but there is also the BLIC, for instance. Is there any other reason behind the sanctions? Um, a third reason regarding Russia is that it has from start a solid economy and industry, and it is rich in natural resources, and it has a cutting edge technology as well. So this includes uh, its weapons manufacturing. So Western analysts that now say that sanctions against Russia will inexorably prevail in the long run. In a tweet, he said that after nine packages of sanctions, Russia was doing better than before, so less than zero impact. Was he right about that? Yeah, he, he listed uh, geo countries uh, which instead show an increased bilateral turnover, with the exception of Sweden, I believe, or Latvia, uh, Finland, uh, the Baltic countries in some. Well, the interesting issue in, in that classification uh, uh, put forward by, um, by uh, this uh, parliamentary uh, is that the countries he is mentioning uh, um, are characterized by historical uh, territorial disputes uh, with Russia. Um, all of those countries, including Sweden, Finland, etc. Uh, the anti-Russian sentiment is also higher in those countries, according to polls, is higher in those countries than in others in Europe, except perhaps um, Poland. Nevertheless, as I pointed before, sanctions have ultimately a political goal. And some countries in Europe have started to understand that the sanctions imposed to Russia at the initiative of the United States would very well be a strategical move from the part of the United States to undermine the economies of those countries in Europe. And with that, at the end, making the American economy to prevail stronger than those of their, their European um, competitors. I have 
already elaborated on that as early as March, um, April 2022, when I predicted that the economic sanctions would result in a boomerang for the European economies. What about the effect on Russian exports uh, of these sanctions? Has Russia not lost revenue from that? The Russian economy, the Russian currency, export, import indexes and other markets have got stronger. At the end of the day, we might find in Russian's counterparts in the United States, in the European Union, in NATO, etc., the West, in other words. We might find they are an exacerbated narcissism harbored in their powers elites. Their belief that their support to certain countries, or vice versa, antagonism towards other nations would be essential for the survival respectively destruction of those nations. But they are wrong, nevertheless. Those elites, and I know them well, I may say, fail to understand the limitations of the hegemonic rule of the so-called West. Again, Russia has reinforced its economy ties, alliances, and friendship with several countries, such as in alphabetic order, if I'm right, Argentina, uh, Brazil, China, Iran, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Venezuela, etc. Not to mention uh, the welcome in African and other Middle East countries that uh, Russia is experiences in these uh, times. Uh, Russian oil does not need to be sold predominantly to European countries. Russia has other strong markets to interact with, where to acquire pieces of technology for its further industrialization demands, etc. Much more of this coming up after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> 